Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel, and more Angevin adventures with Crusader Kings 3, and now our third ruler, our third duke in Duke Folk II. Uh, the last two episodes were, of course, rather tumultuous, and especially last one where Folk's father, Joffrey, passed away, and Folk then inherited a war, and then had an uprising where I still maintain it was folks' correct decision to not uh, continue that war because there was just no military solution to win it. And it was bleeding the infrastructure dry of the duchy. And so, yes, some powerful vassals do have hooks on him, but there's really not much we could do about that. Now, where has that left things? Well, first of all, one of the Duke's children, the eunuch, Geoffrey d'Anjou, is in prison and have already started to, you know, we're going to pay the ransom to get him back. The other thing that has changed, he is no longer in line to inherit in Pomerania because Queen Amelie, the Mad, uh, has two children. So she actually married... And as such, uh, that's, that's kind of out of it. And the other thing that that changes is her heirs are now in line to become heads of the house. So we're kind of moving away from that situation overall, that scenario of becoming the house head of the house d'Alju. It's very frustrating. In my opinion, it should have immediately been handed to Folk, uh, the rude upon him basically claiming the entire county and Emily becoming unlanded, as it were. But, you know, so be it, we'll deal with it. As we take a closer look at Folk himself, he is, you know, uh, he's okay. I mean, he's average in martial and stewardship, below average in everything else. So the focus will be stewardship and maybe a little bit of martial there. Being ambitious and gluttonous kind of works well together, but those two combined with humble will make for some unique roleplay exploration interpretations. He's also a thrifty clerk, so he likes to balance the money. Uh, so we'll have to kind of see where that goes. The other thing that's changed, we did look at expanding into Bourbon and getting that claim for Barthélemy, one of our powerful vassals, but that's not possible right now because he is at 186 prestige. Uh, losing that war really hurt in that regard, so does not have the prestige to do that. So Folk may go down as one of the biggest disappointments uh, in the House d'Anjou's history that we're playing out here. So focusing on internal is really what this episode's going to be about. We're just gonna hit on pause here at one speed as I talk a little bit. There aren't really any, any key wars to be able to be fought. Uh, financially, you need to rebuild, need to rebuild prestige, as well as piety. There you can see we had to pay the ransom for our son. So that's done. So this could be, I'm going to say, an uneventful episode, but uh, maybe, maybe not. All right, we need a guardian for our son. And here, what, is, what are his strengths? Um, maybe learning or diplomacy. Who's good at learning? The bishop. Yes, yes. I think uh, the bishop to educate our child because honestly, as, and I have two prisoners here we can ransom, as Folk has been thinking about and discussing with his wife, since Joffrey is a eunuch, uh, blessing. I have been a good vassal to you, but surely you understand that I have subjects of my own too. My current contract is very restrictive. Surely you would see the wisdom of making it more lenient. Besides, you do owe me. It seems I have little choice. Feudal contract negotiations have been blocked. So yeah, um, to possibly send him when he becomes older... Um, to, to take the cloth. Uh, he cannot sire children. Of course, we got this betrothal before any of that happened. And to not split the realm too far, as Folk has seen both happen to his father and grandfather. 
So we've got a few that we can ransom here. So we are going to ransom some people out. Greetings, my serene vassal. You have been a loyal and devoted subject, and I wish to reward you for your service. In recognition for this, I am hereby offering you the position of Steward of France. Okay, that's, um, that's rather generous of the king, given that um, he's not exactly really good at it, but I guess this is due to the standing of his father and grandfather. Now, when it looks, uh, when I'm looking at other alliances, um, a grand tournament by Countess Hedwig. He may not arrive. Oh. Yeah. Unfortunately, if Göttingen, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, that's, that's a shame. He may not arrive in time, so we're not going to do that. But we do have a new stewardship perk. We could go with Soon Forgiven, so Monthly Tyranny goes down. Positions of Power, Counselor Opinion, plus 20. So let's unlock that, and we will look at our council. Everybody is quite smitten with us. Now, currently, we are scheming to sway Count Guillaume to at least like us a little bit more. Uh, if and when that you know, comes to fruition, we need to look externally at places because if I look over here with whom we could um, have an alliance, it's Duke Baudouin of Auvergne. And here, bumping up his, as much as he, you know, likes folk, that could be the easiest path to doing that. Uh, we don't have a hook, so there's not really much we can do there. Now, he does have a few children we could look at possibly betrothing to. Um, but uh, don't entirely need to go down the incest route just yet. So we are in line to inherit. Uh, third in line for a, a number of number of titles, mainly the, the Kingdom of Pomerania and the Duchy of Champagne. So those aren't really areas I'm too worried about. We've got unpressed clans on Champagne and Nantes. That's that's not a focus necessarily, and going to war with Brittany just wouldn't be prudent at this time. Now we do have a very troublesome vassal we need to keep an eye on, namely Countess Eva of Lusignan. She has a lot of pressed claims down here, including Poitiers and Gascon. We could, because she's a known criminal, we could revoke her title. Um, because, again, known as a known criminal, this uh, will not count as an act of tyranny. And you concede a revocation reason, reason on her. We get a pressed claim on the county of Lusignan. The faction this character belongs to gains 25 discontent. Uh, which she is her own faction. She loses opinion, and she will rebel with other disgruntled rebels. And that isn't exactly something we can afford at this time. She is allied with a few other counts, so not really something we can afford to do. We'll just keep an eye on her. If we look at factions, if this ever becomes too, too high and too powerful, then it'll be time to mm, maybe look for alternative solutions to the problems of Ava in Lusignan and in Poitiers as a whole. So I've been taking a closer look at not just gaining some alliances, but specifically also marriages. And here is one that could be very interesting, because I don't care about Nalt. Brittany really wasn't a major concern, at least not at this point. And here is one that could be of significant mm, interest to us, and that is a betrothal and alliance with Brittany. So outside of France, which could be very powerful if we ever get to the point of challenging England. That is with our heir, Hugh d'Anjou, and Hodien of House de Rennes, and the daughter of the Duke 
of Brittany. Uh, we've got a medium chance of children. She is 10 years old. She is pensive, a little bit impatient, but it's okay. She's already quite good at stewardship at the age of 10. Poor pretty much everywhere else. He's 12 years old, and that, you know, could be an interesting little alliance here, which is something that people in the comments have said as well, is to kind of get closer to Brittany, especially if we ever want to become independent of France. And with those 3,500 troops, this would be a very good and strong ally. So we're going to send the proposal to the Duke of Brittany and see what he says. To the Serene Folk, I gladly accept your betrothal proposition. Your son and heir, Hugh, will be betrothed to my daughter, Hodian. Excellent. And with that, we can take a look and we have gained another strong ally here in Brittany. So we've got three really good allies in Champagne, France, and Brittany. And that really helps us um, for possible internal struggles as well as external struggles. If we look at England right now, we have King Ralph. Aha, so Robert Courthouse has passed away. England right now is, um, I'm not going to say isolated, but... He has 6,700. If we would declare a war here for Thibault's claim on the county of men, that uh, still, we, we don't have the prestige. What we need to do is bump up the prestige and our coffers, and then this could be really, really interesting for us. With Brittany now in the fold and Champagne, uh, no chance really of France doing much there. Uh, we have to negotiate an alliance here. Greetings, my serene liege. I eagerly propose to formalize the ties already bind us as our brother, Count Joffrey. So we will accept that. And as such, things are moving in the right direction for folk. So one interesting thing, a decision that has popped up, and that is we can create our own cadet branch. If we create a cadet branch, we become the head of our house so we can make more decisions that way. We can break off from Queen Emily. We gain 350 prestige, which would then allow us to really push England and declare that war for men and kind of create the Duchy of Anjou. And it could be a fun way to introduce a certain name to all of this so yeah i think this is the right course of action it's going to be a little bit different but we are going to create a cadet branch at this point so right now it says you are now a member of the house anjou lude which is a little bit weird but folk is the head of the house but we are we are going to rename this baby we're going to get rid of the quartering. This will be our new sign. And we will, because this Joffrey, or this, this folk, it could kind of fit in there. And we are going to go with Plantagenet. I think that uh, that could be interesting. Yes, I think uh, this could be an interesting one. What if we start from scratch and give a more customization to the way our house looks? Okay, so we're going to go with that. Um, the emblem itself, color, we'll go with a yellow. And then the layout, we could go... That's not really what I wanted. Um, we could go with two lions... Pick those real quick. And we will do the primary color for both of these in the yellow. There we go. I think that, that looks nice. What do the Normans look like? They have just two. We're going for a brighter red. We're going for three. And uh, the three, why the three? Well, one to represent 
the Duchy of Berry, one for the Duchy of Poitiers, and one for the eventual Duchy of Anjou. So three lions. I, I like that. Um, a little, maybe a little bit premature. Let me know your thoughts. I could always go back and change the coat of arms. That's, that's an easy thing to do. If that's uh, too much, too on the nose here to change, change that. If we look at the coat of England, it is those three. Mm, that, so maybe that's a little garish to do that. Ooh, I just had an idea. Here is the idea I had. We're going to go with the lions. The lions were kind of there before. But we're going to do it on a French blue background instead of the English red that came from the Normans. I think this is nice. This is this works for me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I mean, again, I can go back and I can change it. But uh, I, think, uh, I think that's what we're going to go with right now as the house Plantagenet is born. So now if we look here, now we could declare this war against England for the county of men. That we now really, really could do. If we take a look at him, where is he sitting right now? 6,600. Most of that are just general levies. If we look at us here, 2,600, our allies throw in another 10,000. Granted, that's also with the French, who are not, who are not going to be a part of this. Champagne. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, Champagne itself, they have 9,000 levies, decent amount of bowmen, pikemen. Five Knights, some Mangonels, Brittany. How are they looking right now? They've got 1,900 levies. Good amount of light footmen, bowmen, pikemen, armored footmen, Mangonels. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. War with England for men? Hmm. And then uh, we could essentially put... Thibault here, placate him a little bit more, and then form the Duchy of Anjou, and then we could rename, we could switch to be Anjou and no longer Barry. I mean, we could be Poitiers, but we're keeping it Barry right now. I think that would be a good play. It's super risky. It's very risky right now. Uh, where are we sitting here? I mean, it's saying, you know, King Ralph is more powerful, but that's because of allies. That's the key thing here. If our allies come in with us, that could be very powerful indeed. Now, one thing I do notice here in Aquitaine is allied with Auvergne and currently has no heirs. The heir is actually the king of France. Relative, I mean, he's going to produce some heirs eventually, but he's betrothed to a 12 year old. Um, so it's going to be a while before anything there can happen. It could be a time to strike against Aquitaine, but I don't feel like that's the right play right now for us. I think the, the risky option of going to war with England might be might be the direction to go. Guillaume is swayed. That's very, very nice. See, they have two children. Princess Joan and Princess Adela. House Normandy. And Joan is the heir. Hmm. God, this is something to really really think about here so there's no real marriage there to look at let's see where does scotland sit right now does he have any young children that would work no everyone is quite a bit older so there's nothing 
nothing really there uh, that we could tie in to a marriage there just to get us a little bit more power. We do have Fulk, our two-year-old. Let me let me look real quick. Yeah, there's nothing really there. I mean, we could propose a marriage um, out here, um, or I mean, just just nothing really there where I go. Yeah, that's that's the ticket. I don't think the Norwegian has anybody remotely in there. Uh, we could arrange a marriage here with our son, but it gets no acceptance. That would have been a great one to have, just to put pressure on it. Obviously, Scotland would have been the nicest one. Mm, what about P Prince Maddock? He's... Is there any... Well, we don't have any female heirs really nothing to play with there so yeah that's our situation right now but you know what this has been a, a little bit of a different type of episode not a lot of action and i think it's time for a key decision but i want you all to be part of this decision i will folk will acquiesce he will look at his council the council is you Council of the newly formed House Plantagenet. The cadet branch of the Anjou's is now head of the house. We're going to look at house decisions in the next episode. But should we go to war with England for that claim? For our vassal to, you know, make him happy. Don't have to fabricate a claim. We don't have to spend money on it. And then we would have enough. We have that then one county to form the Duchy of Anjou. We could change this from Barry to Anjou. Let me know down in the comments what we should do. So the decision is yours down in the comments. Um, majority rules. Just put in go to war or no war. Uh, that'll be the easiest way for me to see in this one. Obviously for anybody who's watching this much later than when I put it out. Uh, the decision will already have been made at that point. But this is a key turning point, and I want you to be part of this. So please let me know down in the comments what folk should do. And as always, hit like if you are enjoying the series and you enjoyed this little bit different episode. A little more internal political strategizing episode. You can't be a war all the time. And the last episode was super chaotic, so I think this works. Let me know down in the comments what you think to war with England or not. Until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.